Okay, so steroids in the brain. Um, what we're going to talk about this one is a recent study I read, which is the basically the effect of nandrolone decanate on depression and memory. Now, the actual study looked at exercises' effect on depression, uh, exercise and nandrolone on depression, and nandrolone on its own depression against the control. <coughs> now, this is a rat study. And before everyone starts jumping on, I am well aware that rat studies don't always translate into the same effects in human studies. But let me deal with the study, and then I'll get into why I feel it's relevant. So... Basically, there were four control groups. Four groups, to say. One was control, obviously. Uh, one was five days of vigorous exercise, which involved swimming. And then one was nandrolone exercise, and one was nandrolone alone. Um, and what they looked at was neuropeptide Y and its levels in plasma and in the hippocampus. Now, you may ask why this can't be done on humans well the dosage was 20 milligrams per kilo so for a hundred kilo individual that's two grams for someone like myself that's 3.2 grams of deca a week that ain't gonna pass ethics anywhere in the world the second issue as to why it can't be done on humans is that in order to assess the levels in the hippocampus, they removed the rat's brains. So there you go, why rats are used. Now, what they noted was that those with exercise had reduced stress levels. And they did a stress test, which is the tail suspension test. Uh, basically, they hang a rat by its tail and see how it reacts. Um, and it's measured in the, the period of time that the rat is immobile. Basically how long it gives up for, which relates to how depressed, low mood the animal is. Uh, this is a standard test. This is a test that's been used in numerous thousands and thousands of rat studies against depression and medications and how it all works. So this isn't a one-off thing. This is an established, recognized way of testing depressive state within the rats. The next thing they did was they measured the levels of neuropeptide Y in the blood plasma. Now neuropeptide Y is a neurotransmitter and among other things it's involved in quite a lot of processes but it helps with the formation of new memories and it has a direct fat impact with stress and mood and depression and anxiety. And then the other areas in which they measured was the hippocampus. Now the hippocampus has several areas and they measured MPY in CA1 which is mainly deals with signaling outputs, CA2, which has low level input, CA3, which again is input, and DG, which is effectively the area of the hippocampus that deals with the formation of new memories. Now, what they found was that the control was the control. So no changes there. Uh, the exercise rat had severely reduced levels of stress and depression and anxiety uh, and had elevated MPY. So blood plasma was pretty much unchanged. The hippocampus levels were higher. The nandrolone, again, blood plasma levels weren't overly affected but hippocampus levels were quite dramatically. And the TST test, the tail suspension test, showed long periods of immobilization, i.e. the rat had given up. And then the exercise with nandrolone showed a reduction as well, though not as severe. So the nandrolone offset and overcame the benefit of exercise. So, what does this show us? Well, it shows us that in rats, so pharmacological doses of nandrolones can increase depressive light states, anxiety, and affect memory formation. 
and it's the reduction levels of neuropeptide Y in the DG region of the hippocampus. If there's less neurotransmitters in there, the formation of new memories doesn't occur as efficiently. Now, we're all going to say, but this doesn't relate to humans, this is rats. And yes, there is a lot of evidence to support that rat studies do not translate literally across to humans. However, previous studies on neuropeptide wide in rats have generally translated across to humans pretty well. But let's all put that to one side. There was also another study that came out recently. And this was to regards to depression and anxiety in long-term users and this was done by both interview and by a series of tests so standard questionnaires uh, that are used to diagnose depression or anxiety issues and over 50 percent of users reported higher levels or more occasions of depressive light states and higher levels of anxiety post usage or post since they started using. So pre-usage and post-usage, they were more depressed and they suffered anxiety more often. And then let's look at some real life, okay? Um, I work occasionally with a female bodybuilder, not gonna mention the names, uh, quite an accomplished female bodybuilder and quite a clever young lady. And she spent several weeks in effectively the nut house severe anxiety and depressive problems and lo and behold at the time she was running very high levels of tren coincidence well she'd run high doses of other drugs plenty of times before and had no issues when she started the tren she got issues when she stopped the tren the issues went and in retrospect when you speak to her she's quite open about the fact that she has no doubt that the tren triggered the problem. Obviously, Tren is an androlone. Uh, Tren probably has a greater impact than Decanate does on such regions due to its higher binding affinity to the receptor. So, you know, we have a study here with rats that's showing a direct link to nandrolone use to memory impact, depression and anxiety. But we also have plenty of evidence in the real world you know um, I've come across numerous numerous people who have anxiety and depression issues post usage not all based around nandrolone use without a doubt no um, but particularly with trend uh, a lot a lot of trend users report anxiety related issues and they don't necessarily lose the anxiety issues post usage they obviously lessen but for some the anxiety once triggered is a permanent issue so as far as i'm concerned these studies need to be taken quite seriously uh, and discounting them because they're just on rats is foolish You've got to look at everything. You've got to look at the, the study, then you've got to look at the real world implications, and you've got to speak to users and get feedback from those regions as well. And to me, there is no doubt whatsoever that nandrolones can cause depression, particularly at very high doses. And I have no doubt they impact memory and cognitive skills, because I'm telling you now, I have definitely seen a change in my cognitive ability, my ability to concentrate is a lot worse than it was before I started UC1. And my memory is ridiculously bad. I mean, we are talking on a level of dementia. Bad. I forget stuff beyond belief. It is terrible how bad my memory is. So, you know, that's me personally. But like I say, I have hundreds, thousands of people I've worked with who are having issues with anxiety whilst on trend and post trend usage. So I have no doubt at all in saying that uh, Nandrolones, particularly trend, 
will cause depressive like states in users, will increase anxiety and has a direct impact on our ability to record memories short term. Uh, and this is all down to its reduction of neuropeptide Y, which is obviously, as I've already said, a neurotransmitter. So there you go. Okay. Um, something to bear in mind. Now, is there a safe dose? I don't know. What has been shown is that at low doses, there is an improvement. Uh, there's a boost to the immune system. Uh, there is a boost to recovery. Uh, and it is quite beneficial. But when we start getting into the higher doses, then it becomes problematic. And that seems to be something that I see across the board a lot. And a lot of people cite studies about testosterone improving cognitive ability uh, and mood and this, that, and the other. And well, yeah, but that's that's basically at TRT levels, that's at low, low doses, and that's generally with people that have a diminished test level. So it's therapeutic uh, and it does create improvements. But when we start getting to super pharmacological doses, we start to see the negative. We start to see the opposite effect. And it would appear then that it does literally the opposite. It impairs cognitive function uh, and it impairs or it increases depressive life states and it increases anxiety and can cause long-term issues. Now, it is complex because there is also the whole world of changes in someone's physically appear physical appearance and the fact that you know, if someone's making a decision to use gear, then they've made a decision to change the way they look quite seriously. It's quite a commitment, really. You're going to take a drug. So, therefore, you're quite committed to changing the way you look. When you cease the use of that drug, obviously, you cease seeing the benefits of that drug. And that change in physique can also have a negative impact. So, we have depression caused from a chemical level within the brain, but we can also have depression caused because of a physical change within the person. They no longer have the physique they used to have. I'm currently wrapped up in a suicide case for the police. Now, this guy was a firearms officer uh, and basically literally was found one Friday morning hanging his garage by his neck. Uh, there was no indication. There was, there was no problems at work. There was no note. Um, all reports come back that, you know, good social life, family and friends, all good, relationships, all good. So at this stage, it was like, we don't know what's caused this. <clears throat> um, I was asked to take a look at the case, uh, mainly because I was in the right place at the right time. Uh, and it turns out that this guy was a fitness model. Uh, a few years ago and I'd done quite well and had won quite a few competitions and I'd been on the cover of some magazines and I did raise the question that there may have been illicit fat burner use there may have been um, performance and image enhancing drug use though it wasn't a guarantee but that that usage coupled with an inability to accept that he no longer had the physique that he used to have could be a trigger and cause behind the fact they took his own life. So it's an avenue that they're now exploring. Uh, it may not be, you know, I just, just basically gave them what I knew. Uh, but it does go back to that point where saying that not only do you have a chemical impact from the drugs on depression and anxiety, but you can also have a environmental impact uh, because you know, you're not the size you used to be, you're not the strength you used to be. And though it hasn't caused me depression, I am aware of the fact that I'm not as big and more than I'm not as strong as I used to be. And it can be a bit of a piss me off at times. So, you know, there's several impacts that can, can there's several avenues and there's several factors that can be played in post uses depression and post uses anxiety. Uh, people can suddenly come to terms with struggling to the fact that they're not training like they used to uh, and they can get anxious about the fact and, and feel like they're doing something wrong that they're failing themselves I know at my most intense points in my training life I used to get very anxious if I missed a meal 
Uh, I used to really play on my mouth. You know, I've ruined all my gains. I'm going to lose size because I've missed a meal. Now, obviously, one meal isn't going to kill the world, but that happening on a regular basis is going to have an impact. Uh, and one of the reasons I managed to get to where I was and do what I did was because I was obsessive about those elements of what I was doing. So, you know... It's definitely not a single thing that proves all, um, and there are definitely other factors that need to be considered. But as far as I'm concerned, this study has enough weight to be considered seriously. Okay, so I'm going to get off because I've ranted on enough. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll speak to you all soon.